Ah, that's better. Thanks to everyone whose awesomeness got me to 1K. And a proper thank you is coming soon. This is 1927's The Lodger, a story of London Fog. Well, it's good to know that this movie was approved for public exhibition, and isn't one of those controversial UK video nasties. That cheeky Lodger graphic pulls a fast one on us before going into the credits, where we find the Lodger is simply called The Lodger. I wonder if he's got a more casual name around friends, or is he Mr. Lodger in formal settings? Anyway, we also have Daisy the Mannequin, which may or may not make this the prequel to 1987's Mannequin. A sign advertising, tonight Golden Curls, illuminates a dead body. Hysterical onlookers, curious bystanders, and cops survey the scene. The Avengers calling card is found, but there's no contact info. How unprofessional is that? All involved indulge in a soothing cup of tea, but it seems the witness may need more than just one. Of course, every crowd has a smartass, and this one is no different. We get some pre-sound exposition, and the story spreads across radio, telegraph, and newspaper. In fact, it's murder wet from the press. Eyes in the back of this car watch everything unfold in a very unnerving way. After some additional pre-sound exposition, and murder hot off the aerial, we learn that Daisy the Mannequin isn't a mannequin at all, but a model. And blondes have both sworn off peroxide, and are going undercover as brunettes to stay safe. Later at Daisy's parents' house, cop slash possible suitor Joe does the typical guy thing and sticks his foot in his mouth. He tries to make up for it by giving Daisy a raw cookie dough heart. Unfortunately, he's rejected, and his cookie sags. About that time, the lights flicker, and a long, scary shadow approaches number 13. Daisy's mom answers the door, and a not-at-all-creepy-looking man inquires about a room for rent. Mrs. Bunting shows off the room, including all the fantastic erotic renderings, which in 1927 was clearly trendy wall art in rooms for rent. After accepting the room, he ends up turning all the photos, and his reasoning is interesting. Daisy is still drawn to them, and they end up flirting over tea and over chess where he gives us this gem, and the question remains if this is a threat to kill or love her. At the same time, Joe gets put on the Avenger case, and he goes so far as to get him a gift. Wait, two gifts? Aw, what a guy. Later that night, the cops are out in a line, and the shadowy figure of the lodger makes his way to the streets, waking up Mrs. Bunting and leaving her ill at ease. Elsewhere, a lover's quarrel leads to another victim who screams wake people, cats, and the cops. Back at the Bunting residence, the revelation of another killing down the street has Mrs. Bunting's spidey senses tingling. Joe shows up at the house, and not even a good cuppa can help him feel better after seeing the latest victim. It ends up leading to a fourth wall staring contest. The moment is broken by the sound of falling pitchers, spilling tea, and screams from Daisy. But it's just a moment of fun in the arms of the lodger. Joe is not amused, and his suspicions increase. He tries to force a moment with Daisy, but she only stares towards the man she loves. After discussing the evidence, the Buntings nervously consider the possibility of a killer under their roof who has interest in Daisy. All while the lodger watches Daisy do her mannequin thing. She gives him come-hither eyes, and he returns with possibly his own version of a killer look while lighting another lady's fire. He buys Daisy a fancy dress, which doesn't sit well with the Buntings. Mr. Bunting gives the lodger the business over the interest in his daughter. Under the cover of darkness, the Lodger and Daisy share a romantic bathroom door interaction, and we get a positively scandalous pre-code foot shot. Joe confronts the couple, claiming Daisy as his girl, but she rightly sets him straight. Downtrodden, Joe has a stare down with the camera, and pieces the Avenger case together in a footprint. The couple hold each other close, and then... <laughs> He tries to kiss the camera? The cops led by Joe lead a search of the lodger's lodgings and find a medical bag with some damning evidence. He's arrested but escapes custody and explains to Daisy how his sister was killed in front of him by the Avenger. He pledged then and there to find the killer who he tracked to this neighborhood. Joe follows them and a posse forms to take out their righteous anger. A phone call informs him the Avenger has been caught and he tries to stop the mob. Things look bad but Daisy's affections bring the lodger back. All stories have to end, and this one ends happily, with a joke about a forgotten toothbrush and parents who know when to piss off because... 
1927's The Lodger was directed by Alfred Hitchcock and features the first in what would become a Hitch trademark, his signature cameo. It started by accident when he filled in for an extra that failed to show up for a shoot. The rest, as they say, is history. The movie was based on a story of the same name by Marie Belloc Lowndes. The novel itself was supposedly based on a story told by a landlady who apparently rented rooms to Jack the Ripper. It was quite popular in its day and has been adapted many times since its publication. Although Hitchcock made movies before The Lodger, he considered this to be his first true suspense film. It also stands as his first commercial hit. Even at this early stage in his career, Hitchcock was already doing many things that would define his films. Another staple of his work which caused one of The Lodger producers to be, quote, horrified, was Hitchcock's use of progressive film techniques. He was greatly influenced by German Expressionism, and that shows a lot in the way things were shot. Outside the box lighting effects, unusual angles, and shots that weren't longer than three minutes, which was the standard at the time. His use of camera trickery was also on display. For example, as the Buntings look up at their kitchen ceiling, listening to the lodger pacing above, and the lodger is seen walking across it courtesy of a thick sheet of glass. The shot goes on to use 65 shots over the course of six minutes, which, again, was not something that was commonly done at that time. Another example of this was a representation of eyes in the back windows of a newspaper delivery truck, watching everyone as the creepy story unfolds. Following the book, The Lodger's Innocence was meant to be kept ambiguous, but because popular actor Ivor Novello was cast in the role, the studio did what studios have done across the history of movies and demanded the ending find him innocent. Silent movies relied on title cards to show dialogue, location information, and other important details. And The Lodger certainly has them. But in editing, the number was cut from 400 down to 80, and many of those simply set details of the scene. This left the visual storytelling to shine, and it does it so very well. Until 1989, the only known copies of The Lodger were a variety of black and white bootlegs. The first semi-official release was a German VHS transfer that had tinted screens in sepia shades for indoor scenes and blues for exterior night scenes. Since then, there have been four distinct home video versions. And in 2012, the British Film Institute finally restored The Lodger and eight other surviving silent films by Hitchcock as part of a two million pound project. The Lodger is actually a really special movie to me. I was lucky enough to see it in a vaudeville era theater with a full orchestra, and it stands as one of the most important theater experiences of my life. While watching it, I could have been in 1927. It was truly transformative, and I will forever love this movie for that fact among so many others. This movie broke so many norms of its time, from camera angles to the way it was edited. It stands out as a jewel of visual storytelling at a time when visual storytelling was the norm. And the little humorous moments, set among what is a very dark film for its time, added that little extra that I just love. All this considered, my respect for the art that Hitchcock brought to the screen is probably its highest for this movie. He seems to have solidified what makes a Hitchcock movie with this one, and its impact in making him the director credited with shaping modern suspenseful thrillers can't be understated. If you have doubts about this one, because it's almost a century old and in black and white, I can confirm that it's a fun and interesting watch. It's pretty easy to find, and the visual storytelling alone is worth a watch. Plus, seeing an early Hitch hone his craft makes this one all the more fascinating and enjoyable. Definitely check it out. So what do you think? Suggestions for movies, trivial questions, comments, ratings, and more phrases like murder wet from the press would be appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching.